Hey everyone, Bruce here with DIY Homestead Projects. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make your own battery cables. Now in this particular case I'm not using these for battery cables, I'm using them inside my Harbor Freight 90 amp flux core welder as I'm modifying it to uh, to a DC machine instead of an AC machine. But this is the same process whether you're making battery cables, make your own battery cables, or cables for whatever application you might be using. Maybe you're using this for an audio system or something. There's lots of different applications, but the process is exactly the same. I have a couple pieces of wire here that I've got cut to a specific length for the size cables that I need, or the length cables that I need. And then I'm using copper. This happens to be quarter inch outer diameter copper and I'm thinking that it came off of a uh, refrigerator water line or something something like that it's just some old copper that I found laying around here that I'll be using for this you just need to find out whatever size cable you're using this is six gauge and find the uh, correct size copper tubing you can buy this in various different sizes that the inner diameter your cable wires will fit right inside there I made my ends about one inch long that way I have half of an inch for the terminal where they be smashed flat and a hole drilled in it and the other half inch will go the wire will go up inside so I'm going to peel these back. I'm not going to measure it. I'm just going to cut them back about a half of, half of an inch, and I'm just using a box knife. Use whatever you've got. So that's what it looks like once you get the cut, and then I just twist it, and it'll come off. This is a piece of plastic. And then you've got the bare copper wire. I just put a twist on it so then that way I can kind of twist my cable end and and this one is really tight and just go around and feed the cable into the piece of tubing but now I'm gonna take a little piece of sandpaper since this is old pipe or if the pipe is tarnished the outside doesn't matter so much but the inside I'm going to take a piece of sandpaper twist it up so that it fits down inside the pipe and then I'm going to go like this and use that to clean the inside of the pipe and I'm going to get it as clean as I possibly can if your copper wire is not clean clean that as well with the sandpaper that's the secret to the success in this because I'm going to be soldering these on some people will crimp those on there and that's fine as well but I'm going to solder mine so I'm going to get these cleaned up and then I'll come back and show you how I'm going to solder these on there now that I have it cleaned up you can see how that's going to fit about halfway into that pipe so I've got the end of the wires kind of twisted up <clears throat> then I'm just going to put them in my flux and I'm going to try to get a little bit of flux inside the tube matter of fact I'm going to take my solder and kind of poke that flux in there a little bit this flux will help clean that pipe even though you sanded it down to where it was shiny It'll take the oxidization off of the pipe so that the solder will stick. <clears throat> and then make sure I have plenty of flux on the wire. And then I'm going to work my pipe over the end of the wire. Here's where I'm going to make sure I have all the wires tucked up in there. I kind of twist it as I push it on and there we go 
so I've got no wires sticking out and then I just again I like to take plenty of flux and I'm gonna run it see how I don't have it pushed on all the way I've got it a little gap there I'm just gonna run some flux right there Now there's a lot of different ways to go about soldering this on. Hopefully I'm getting that on the video. Um, this is just how I like to do it. And then what I'll do is I heat this up. I'm going to heat it up on the end. That heat will transfer to the inner wire. Now this sheathing is going to burn back a little bit, but that's fine. And then I'm going to touch my wire or my solder right here and it'll suck the uh, solder up inside and then last but not least I'm going to push that on before it cools I'm going to push that all the way on this just helps me get make sure that I can see that the solder is being sucked up inside the joint so let's go over to the area where I'm going to solder this on the floor and then I'll uh, show you how I do that if you need to slide your heat shrink on there in this case it's short I can put it on from the other end so it it doesn't matter too much but whatever you got to do this might be the time you need to put your heat shrink on just going to use this hammer to kind of hold that in place now I'm going to heat it up on the tip or Occasionally touch the solder to the joint and when it's hot enough it'll start to melt. There we go. I know you probably can't see this on the video, but I can see the solder melting and being sucked into the joint. And then I'm going to heat that up. Just enough to push the push the end on there tight. Then I'll let that cool and I'll clean that up with a old rag and show you what that looks like. But see how it melted the insulation a little bit. This is cheap insulation. This is some cheap Chinese wire that I have. So let me get that cleaned up a little bit and I'll show it to you. And that's what it looks like when you get it kind of cleaned up and then I'll smash the tip actually first I'm going to clean up the oxidization that's on the end of it with a piece of sandpaper now once you have it cleaned up it looks like this now I've got this set up here with a just a piece of metal so I can get a nice flat spot on it and then I'm going to smash the end of it flat with with my hammer again if you need to put heat shrink on before you do this go ahead and do it at this point in time I'm gonna be fine with this particular piece since I could put it on from the other end if I need to and there we go so now I've got a nice flat spot on it and I'll take a file and clean up any sharp edges maybe round the corners if you need to for your application it might need to flatten a little bit more I've got a situation where I'm putting three of these on the same lug so I need it to be as flat as possible some people will run the wire all the way through the tube and then smash it down on the wire and then drill a hole through that and that's fine too that won't work for me in this particular case so next I'm going to take my drill and I'm going to drill a appropriate size hole for the lug in the end of it and that's what I'm left with a nice soldered on lug that's gonna made out it's made out of copper so the conductivity will be excellent it's not going to ever come off of there and it was 
dirt cheap basically free it just took me some time to build now if you're like me I never have the right tool I always have to improvise so my heat shrink is is the biggest piece I have it's not quite the right it's I, it's a little bit too small so I just take a couple of screwdrivers put them down in the heat shrink like this and then twist it just to stretch it a little bit it won't be stretched in the center as much as it is on the ends but that'll be good enough to where I can get it on the cable and I'll work it down to where I want it to be and then shrink it then you can take a match or whatever you got I like to use a heat gun here's a bonus lug for you guys I needed one that could fit this 3 8 inch bolt and the ones I was making out of the uh, quarter inch pipe aren't big enough for this quarter inch or this 3 8 inch bolt so here's one that I made same method out of a copper penny since this is educational I can do this without getting in trouble for destroying a penny but it's only a penny way cheaper than buying one so I just took that piece of copper pipe like I've been making the other terminals split it with a pair of shears cleaned up the inside and clamped it onto my penny and then drilled my hole for my terminal so then I'll run my heat shrink up there so there's two make your own battery cables with copper lugs that were real cheap and these will work really well for transferring electrical power to your device how you make it yourself if you like the video give me a thumbs up consider subscribing to the channel I make lots of DIY money saving type projects on this channel just like what I did with these uh, make your own battery cables hope you guys have a great day and we'll see you on the next video